Math 3, Unit 10, Section 2. Today we're going to talk about angles in standard position and also introduction to solving for an angle. So standard position, okay, is an angle is in standard position if its vertex is located at the origin and one ray is on the opposite x-axis. I'm sorry that I can't speak today. So this right here is an angle in standard position, okay? Positive angles are generated from going counterclockwise, like going to the left, where negative angles are would you, where you would start going down and going clockwise, okay? You need to remember your quadrants, one, two, three, and four, because today we're gonna be just like making angles and then stating what quadrant they're in. Okay, now this reference angle is something that you're gonna practice here in a minute. And so if you'll notice, if you have a 60 degree angle, so we're gonna be talking about the unit circle, okay? And so the unit circle, if you draw a circle in here, is 360 degrees. Do you guys agree with that? Okay, it's important to remember that starting here is at zero degrees. And then how much is this first line right here? 90 degrees. And then a straight line is how much? 180 degrees. And then do you know how much this is right here? 270 degrees. And then this goes up and also is 360 degrees. And you'll find that we'll have some angles that are greater than 360. Well, all that means is that you're going to kind of like loop around and go more than 360 degrees. Okay? So reference angles, though, are always less than 90 degrees. Okay? I'm just going to write this. Always less than 90 degrees. <clears throat> so your reference angle is going to like your the x-axis from wherever you're at. So here, the reference angle, this is 60 degrees, the reference angle is 60 degrees, okay? Over here, this angle right here is 120, but you would go down to the x-axis, and the reference angle ends up being this little piece right here, which is also 60 degrees. Um, on this one, this angle, it's, this right here is 240 degrees, but the reference angle, it always just goes up to the x-axis, and so this base right here is 60 degrees. Okay, and over here on this last one, this angle right here, if you notice, it's saying that it's 315 degrees where it stops. But wherever it stops, you always go up to the x-axis. And so what's left there is 45 degrees. And that reference angle is 45 degrees. And again, we're going to get lots of practice with this. But just know you're always going to be going up to the x-axis. And your answer should always be less than 90 degrees. Okay? So let's start practicing. So here it says, sketch each of the following angles in standard position. So if we start right here, 170 degrees, it's important for you to remember your 0, 90, 180, 270. If you don't have those already memorized, I would write them on every single one that you're doing. If you know them by heart, then you don't have to write them. Do you guys want me to make this? Sorry. Okay, so where is 170 degrees going to go? Yeah, near 180, right? And so when you're drawing your angle, we're going to draw like a circle. So I'm starting at zero. I'm going to go to 170, and I draw a line here. And I normally just put my 170 degrees by where my line is. Okay, so I have just sketched that angle in standard position. A is done. B says identify the quadrant in which the terminating ray resides. So what quadrant is 170 in? Two. All we do is write two. Okay, reference angle. 
So again, we talked about how with the reference angle, it always goes to the x-axis. It's always less than 90 degrees. And so this reference angle is gonna be right here. It makes a 90 degree angle. Um, and we need to know, well, what the, what's that little piece there? 10. How did you guys figure that out? Very good. So you kind of need to see where you're at. But in this case, what you guys did is you took 180 minus 170 in order to get 10 degrees. And so I just want you to be aware of what you're doing because on some of them it might be a little bit more tricky. Okay, you guys ready for the next one? Great. Okay, 210 degrees. So again, if you're not remembering each of these, we have 0, 90, 180, 270. So therefore, 210 degrees is gonna be in which quadrant? Three. Quadrant three. So I'm gonna write that first, and then we're gonna draw our standard position. So again, it starts at zero, it goes all the way around, and then 210, I'm just gonna put that, it stops there. We know it's somewhere in quadrant three, and that is 210 degrees. So to draw my reference angle, it's going to draw a line from this line where? Up to the x-axis, very good. Okay, and we need to figure out how much is this piece right here? Because the reference angle is the angle that's going up to that x-axis, it's gonna be less than 90 degrees. How could I find out what that piece is? Very good, we're gonna take 210 <coughs> minus 180, because we're basically figuring out how much it goes past, good. Yeah, so 210 minus 180 is 30. So the reference angle is 30 degrees. Any questions or clarifications up to this point? Mm -mm. Okay, so 320. What quadrant will that be in? Quadrant three. Because this right here is 270 and this is 360, right? When it loops back around. And so 320 is in between those two values. Does that make sense? So when we draw this, you start at zero. It wraps around and it's gonna stop in this quadrant and we're gonna draw a line here. And that is 320 degrees. That is which quadrant? Four. Sorry, if I said three, sorry. Quadrant four. My reference angle is gonna go where? Up to the x-axis, okay? We know that that angle, it's always going to be less than 90 degrees. And so in this case, how could I figure out how much it is? Good, we're gonna take 360 minus 320, which is 40 degrees is my reference angle. Okay, 70 degrees. Where are we gonna go for 70 degrees? Very good, just quadrant one, because this is 90, correct? So 70 is in between zero and 90. So on this one, when you're drawing it, it's gonna just be halfway in there. This is 70 degrees. Where will I go for this reference angle? Down to the x-axis. And it happens that this reference angle and the angle in standard position is the same. They are both 70 degrees. They're both at the same point. Does that make sense? Is that just for quadrant one? Very good. That will always happen in quadrant run. So anything in quadrant one, the reference angle and the angle in standard position will be the same unless it's greater than 360. So you'll have some angles that will go around and then it would be a little different there. Okay, any questions you wanna ask? Yes? How do you know which angle is subtract from? Very good question. So it really just depends on where you're at. For the most part, you're gonna be either, if you look here, um, You'll notice that when I went here, I was dealing with 180. Here, I went up to this line here. I'm dealing with 180. But on this one, see how I'm past it? I subtracted 180. 
on this one, I wasn't quite to 180, so I took that and subtracted the number from 180. Am I making sense? So when you're not quite to the line, you're going to go 180 minus the angle you're at. When you're past the 180 line, you're going to take the angle and subtract it from 180. And then if you notice that you're on the other side, this one is going up to the 360 line. So I'm using 360 and subtracting. So most of the time, it's going to be 360 or 180 are the numbers that you're going to deal with. You also can like think like, this is 320. What does it take to get up to this line? And you could just count up whatever makes the most sense to you. Did that make it any better? Yeah. OK. Um, any other questions right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. On this one right here? So they asked us to do 70 degrees. We know that 70 degrees is in between 0 and 90. And so this is 70 degrees. We are always going to the x-axis. And if you notice, this angle right here is the same. So the reference in quadrant one, your angle and your reference angle end up being the same. We're not having to subtract it from anything because it's just going from the exact same spot. I don't know if that makes it any better. Do you guys have any other questions right now? Okay, we'll do a few more examples here and then um, again, stop me if you have questions. So what do you notice is different about this? It is negative. So instead of going counterclockwise, we're gonna go down and we're gonna go clockwise, okay? And so this one, you kind of have to think like, okay, this would be zero, this would be negative 90, negative 180, negative 270. Does that kind of make sense? And so when we're doing negative 70 degrees, this is going to be right here, negative 70 degrees. Oh, and I forgot you would draw this little arrow to that line. Okay, so what quadrant are we in? Four. Now reference angles are always positive. Okay, what do you think? So the reference angle, I'm still going to go up to the x-axis. What is that degree going to be? It's still going to be 70. Okay, so we went negative 70 to get to this point, but reference angles are always positive. And this degree, this marking right here, is just 70 degrees. Okay, this one will be a little different, so let's try this one. Negative 100. Oh, yes. Can we see the negative 70 as 290? Can you say it's 290? Can we see it as 290? You can think of it that way, yes, but when you're writing this, you, can, you need to write it as it's stated. Does that make sense what I'm saying? <clears throat> but what you're thinking is going to be helpful in the future because there's going to be times where they're going to ask you to write another angle that means the same thing as negative 70 but is positive and you would do that okay negative 100 so again we need to think this is zero this would be negative 90 so where would negative 100 be quadrant three very good and so we start here, and negative 100 would go into quadrant 3. And again, if you wanted to write this as like 0 and negative 90 and negative 180, negative 270, to help you out, you can. Okay? We're going to draw our line here, and this is negative 100 degrees. And now we need to think about the reference angle. So I'm going to give you guys just about... 10 or 15 seconds to think through and see if you can figure out the reference angle on your own. <clears throat> okay, does somebody want to share? So where is the reference angle going to go? It always goes to what line? Your x-axis, right? So we're going to draw it up. Well, this line that I'm drawing up, that means I'm trying to find this angle right here. 
Yeah, so this is at 100 and you're going up to 180. So therefore, this is how much? 80 degrees. Reference angles will always be positive. So we are just trying to figure out what is this, what is this distance, you know, from here to here. What is that angle? Okay. And so that angle is 90 degrees because here we're at 100 and then it's going to, to get up to the 180 mark, that would take 80 degrees. Okay. Yes. All right. 620 degrees. Okay, this is positive. Obviously, we're going to have to go o around at least one time, right? And so I just start subtracting 360 from this number to see how many times I'm going to go around or where it's supposed to stop at. So if we take 620 and I subtract 360, we get 260. Do you guys agree? Okay, so when you're drawing this one, you kind of want to start in the middle here, but we're going to loop around. Okay, so I just made 360 degrees. Do you guys agree? And then we're going to keep going, and what quadrant will I end up in? Three, because this is 270, right? And so it's 260, it's going to be before that. So it's going to keep looping around and stop about right there. And that is 260 degrees, and I should use a different color, but... I think we'll be okay. Ask me a question. So again, this right here made 360, right? And then we went another 260 degrees. So that's why it's like uh, one loop. And then we went another part of the loop. Oh, and this shouldn't be 260. What should it actually be? This is actually 620. I'm sorry. That should be written as 620 degrees. But it's important to know that this is at 260, though, because that's going to help you with your reference angle, because your reference angle is always going to be what? It's always going to be positive, and it's also always going to be less than 90. OK? So my reference angle will still go up to my x-axis here. And we're trying to figure out this piece. The reference angle is that piece. It's going up here. It's less than 90. How can I figure out what that is? 260 minus 180. Does that make sense? Because I'm at a 260 mark, and I want to see from the 260 mark, how much does it take to get to the 180 mark? So 260 minus 180 ends up giving me how much? 80. So the reference angle is 80 degrees, and it was quadrant 3. Okay, do you guys think you can try that last one on your own? Okay, so give that a try, and I'll walk around if you want to ask me questions, and I'll also check your, check your work. Most of you got it correct. There was only a couple mistakes on some of yours where you forgot to go negative. So remember that negative, you go down. I think of it as going down versus going up. And so negative 300, if we're dealing with negatives, remember this is negative 90. This would be negative 180. This is negative 270. And so negative 300 is going to end up in which quadrant? One. Very good. And so we draw our line. That is negative 300. Quadrant one. Reference angle always goes to the 
x-axis, it's always less than 90 degrees. In this case, I'm trying to figure out what's the distance from here to here. What would I subtract? Good. 360 minus 300 is 60. And so the reference angle here is 60 degrees. So the two things we, or actually three things about the reference angle we want to remember. Number one, always goes to the x-axis. It also is always smaller than 90, and it's always positive. Okay? Any questions before we move on here? No? All right. Okay, so we got some practice on this already yesterday. And we're going to keep dealing with this. Again, this is your unit circle. Each of the radiuses here, or radii, they are one unit out to the circle. Okay, and so this hypotenuse here is one. They also, this is like your x and your y, they have told you that x coordinate. In terms of the triangle, what does that do for you? It's telling you that side, right? Is that what somebody said too? Yeah? And you're going to end up using the Pythagorean theorem. I heard somebody say that. But it's meaning that this distance right here is negative 4 over 5. Is everybody good with that? So this is the x value of the vertex, which means that that distance there, okay, is negative 4 over 5. Now, could I change 1 so it's a fraction with the denominator of 5? Yeah, what would I write it as? 5 over 5. So is everyone good with this being 5 over 5? Okay. Based on that, we're going to know that on the y, this one is going to have a denominator of 5, but we need to figure out the part on top. And so when you're dealing with these, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And we don't have to use the denominators. We don't have to use the fractions. We can just use the numerators. And so when I write this out, it's going to be, so we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so I'm going to write negative 4 squared plus x squared, or whatever you want to do, equals 5 squared. 4 squared is 16, plus x squared equals 25. Subtract 16. x squared equals 9. Take the square root, and x equals what? 3. So that means that the y distance is what? Fifths. Okay, so I'm going to do something a long way and then we'll kind of see if we can figure out a shorter cut. Okay, so sine of theta, here is our theta, okay? Sine is what? opposite over hypotenuse, okay? And so from here, opposite of it is 3 fifths over hypotenuse, which is what? 5 fifths. How do you get rid of a fraction over a fraction? What do you do? Multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 5 over 5. Those all cancel out, and you end up with what? Three fifths. Okay. Three fifths. Do you notice that matching with something in terms of our ordered pair? It's the y value. Sine when you're dealing with a unit circle where it's one unit, the y value represents sine. That's going to be helpful in the future. Okay, cosine. 
So cosine is what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we do this one the long way first, adjacent from here is what? Negative 4 fifths divided by the hypotenuse, which is 5 over 5. We multiply by the reciprocal to the top and the bottom. These all cancel. These cancel. We get negative 4 over 5. And what do you notice about your ordered pair up there? It is your x value. Okay, and this will only use work when it's a unit circle because cosine really is over your op or your adjacent over hypotenuse, but it happens that the hypotenuse is one. So when we're dividing up by one, it's really staying the same, even though right now it's five over five. Okay, tangent of theta. Tangent is what? Very good. Opposite over adjacent. And so we're going to do this one the long way again, too. So opposite is three-fifths over adjacent, which is negative four-fifths. To get rid of the fraction on the bottom, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. In this case, though, it's actually um, five over negative four. Whatever you do to the bottom, five over negative four to the top. Those all eliminate. The fives eliminate, and we end up with? 3 over negative 4. What you will notice is that it is y over x. Um, and you could write the whole fraction, but see they have the common denominators? The denominators end up canceling out, and you just end up with whatever's on top is your y, and whatever's on the bottom is your x. And so tangent is y over x. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to use our knowledge, hopefully, maybe, on this next example. So again, we're dealing with a unit circle. We're dealing with one unit right here. This, though, is in which spot, the x or the y? The y. The y. Okay, so we have x and y. The y right here is negative 5 over 13. Okay. We're going to change this over here. What would be the fraction? 13 over 13. Why is it 13 over 13? Because it's a 1, and since this denominator is 13, this one's going to be 13 over 13. How am I going to find my missing length? Pythagorean theorem. We only have to use the numerators, though. Uh, and you could use the negative or not use the negative because when we square a negative, it becomes a positive anyways. And so I'm going to have x squared plus negative 5 squared equals 13 squared. x squared plus negative 5 squared is what? 25 equals, and 13 squared is 169. In order to solve, what will we do next? Good. Subtract 25 to both sides. X squared equals 144. Am I going too fast? Okay. And then we take the square root and X equals 12. So that means right here, this distance is 12 over 13. Which means that my X coordinate here is 12 over 13. <clears throat> Based on what we kind of figured out in the previous problem, sine is always dealing with the, with the y, which means that what is the sine of theta? Negative 5 over 13. Cosine is always dealing with x, which means I would write that as 12 over 13. And tangent is y over x. And since they have the same denominators, the 13s will eliminate. And so therefore, tangent of theta will end up being what? Negative 5 over 12 is correct. And again, that's y over x. Do you want to ask me any questions? Okay. Moving on. 
filling in the missing sides for these special triangles below, and then we're gonna find the acute angle theta that satisfies the following equations. So, across, if we want these, do these want these to be unit circles? Let's see here. So normally, if we just want to write these out, if we have our 30, 60, 90 triangle, okay? Across from the 30 is what? A, right? Across from the 90 is? 2A, thank you. And across from the 60 is? A root 3, okay? Over here, here we're just kind of rewriting this a different way. This is 60 and 30. Across from my 30 is always A. Across from the 90 is always 2A. And across from the 60 is always A root 3. On the 45, 45, 90 triangle, across from each of the 45s is A. And across from the 90 is a root 2. Good. Okay. Now, if we were to put numbers in some of these, like let's just say A equals 1. Okay? Well, if we said A equals 1, this side would be 1. This side would be 1 root 3 or just root 3. And then this would be 2. Is everybody okay with that? Um... We can do the same thing over here. This one would be two, this one would be root three, this would be one. And then over here, we, if we gave them a one, this would be one, one, and then root two. Okay. <clears throat> Some of these can be a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna do my best to help you. It's like a puzzle. So we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, correct? Yes? So they want to know, well, what degree would give you opposite 1 and hypotenuse 2? Which degree would that be? So if you're looking for a 1, do you see right here how this has a 1? Okay. And that's 30, right? 30 degrees? So if we did 30 degrees, is opposite 1 and hypotenuse 2? Yes. So when I have sine of 1 half, that degree is 30 degrees. Okay, we know that cosine is what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Now root 2 is where? Which triangles have root 2 in them? Okay, so when we look at this 45, 45, 90 triangle, my hypotenuse has the root 2 in it. And this is adjacent over hypotenuse, which makes that like, mm, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. But what do we know about roots? Right, we don't want them in the denominator. So what I want to do here is go backwards. Let's put it in the denominator. So in order to put root 2 in the denominator, um, I'm just rewriting root 2 over 2. I'm going to multiply by root 2 to both the top and the bottom. Is everybody okay? I'm just trying to go backwards to see what happened. So root 2 times root 2, what does that make? 2. Because that would make root 4 and the square root of 4 is 2. Do we agree? And then the, the, the denominator would be 2 root 2. Is everybody okay with that? And then I could reduce these. These two can reduce, correct? And so this is really the same as 1 over root 2. We just went backwards. Um, so we had to change it to figure out where did it start. So what is adjacent and hypotenuse? What degree would that work for? Um, so adjacent to 45 is 1, and the hypotenuse is root 2. And so this one is a 45 degree angle, right? Because adjacent is 1, hypotenuse is root 2. Okay, yes? 
Um, so on this one, I was like, there is no adjacent side that is root two. So that's how I knew that I needed to like, go backwards and put the root in the denominator. No, like, you know how you plugged in one for A for each of the Oh, okay, good question. Um, I just know, see how these are all ones, twos, and threes? That is based on this being the ones. I think all the ones on your homework will be like this. I'll look at it, though, if I need to change it. Um, if it wasn't, you could reduce these, and they would end up getting to this point. Does that make sense? OK. Um, OK, so root 3. We can put root 3 over 1. Do you guys agree? Tangent is always what? Opposite over adjacent. First of all, root 3 is dealing which, with which um, triangle? Okay, so here's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? So if we go to where root 3 is, opposite from that in terms of degrees is 60. And is 1 adjacent to it? Yes. So tangent, this one, what's the answer? 60 degrees. Okay, and again, we know that tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, do you guys notice here how this has a 3 in the denominator? Do any of the sides have a 3 for them? No. So what do you think we have to do? Go backwards, like I did on the other one. I want to get the root 3 out of the top, and so what would I do to get the root 3 out of the top? Root 3 over 3, I'm going to multiply it by root 3 to the top and the bottom, and that ends up making what? Good, 3 over 3, root 3. And then what happens with those 3s on the outside? They cancel and reduce. And so I really end up with 1 over root 3. So for opposite and adjacent, what angle will that be? 30. So if you go here, here's 1. I'm trying to figure out what's opposite from 1. Well, 30 degrees is opposite from 1. Is root 3 adjacent to 30? Yes. So this is a 30 degree. Okay, last two problems. We have this triangle. It's telling you it's isosceles. Isosceles is when you have two equal sides. They want us to find sine, cosine, and tangent. Well, when you're finding sine, cosine, and tangent, it needs to be from a 90 degree angle, okay? So what we do is we draw a line down. We make a 90 degree angle. Based on me drawing a line down and cutting this in half, how much is this side? 15. We need to figure out what this side is. What would I do to figure out that side? Pythagorean theorem. 15 squared plus x squared equals 17 squared. 15 squared is 225 plus x squared equals 17 squared, which is 289. We subtract 225 from both sides. Mm -hmm. 289 minus 225 is how much? 64 equals x squared. And we take the square root of both sides, and x equals what? 8. Okay, do you see here how this is a? Okay, so sine of a. What is sine? opposite which is 8 over hypotenuse which is perfect sine of b i mean sorry sine oh my gosh cosine of a let's try this again i should write these all out and then we have tangent of a cosine of a is going to be what adjacent which is 15 over 17 and then tangent of a is opposite over adjacent which would be 8 over 15. Any questions? All right, last one. They are telling you that tangent of B is 12 over 5. Tangent, we know, is opposite over adjacent. 
So from B, the opposite side is 12. The adjacent side from B is 5. How do we find the hypotenuse? Good. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. 5 squared is 25 plus 144 equals C squared. We add those up together. We get 169 equals C squared, which means that C equals what? 13. Okay? Finding sine of A, cosine of A, and tangent of A. So, I like to circle the angle that I'm at or highlight it so that it's easy to go from there. So from A, opposite is 5 over hypotenuse is 13. Adjacent to A is 12 over hypotenuse is 13. Opposite A is 5 over adjacent is 12. Any questions?